everybody. My name is Nader Mahfouz. And I'm Fabian Fayez. And this is our High Court Games Processing. Uh, well, we're, this is what we're going to be uh, talking about today, uh, name origin and instruction formats, the memory structure, uh, processor uh, register set and data types, and our, enhance, uh, our enhancements. We uh, chose the uh, name uh, hybrid MIPS since it blends different data size manipulation instructions within the same processor or processor is able to handle data at a user-specified size from a range of 4, 8, 16, and 32 bits. Uh, uh, we use the uh, uh, MIPS baseline uh, instruction formats, which are the R, I, and J type formats, and we added a E type for our enhancements. R type refers to a register set. Here you can see the instruction format, and uh, here is how it is decoded. So there is a, uh, six bits for an opcode, uh, two register sources, RS and RT, and a register uh, destination. And each one of those is five bits. And there is a shift amount for the shift operations. Uh, and uh, six bits for a function. Here is the uh, I type. I stands for immediate type instructions. And um, uh, this is the instruction format. And um, here how it is uh, encoded. Uh, again, six bits for an opcode. And uh, here, there is only one register uh, source, RS, and uh, one destination, RT, each one five bits. And we have uh, 16 bits for an immediate value. And uh, uh, J for jump instruction uh, set. And uh, here is the uh, instruction format, how it looks, and uh, how it is encoded. So six bits for the opcode and 26 bits for the target address. Uh, here is our, uh, our addition to the, to the baseline. It's uh, the enhanced uh, type instruction. This is the uh, format, and here is in detail how it's encoded. So the E key, if it's a preselected value, 1F, we use uh, two register sources, one destination, each one five bits, and uh, here is five bits for a bit size amount, uh, which is specified by the user, and uh, six bits uh, at the lowest for uh, the opcode to specify the operation we're gonna be uh, uh, doing. The, uh, our processor uses the Harbor uh, memory architecture with separate 32-bit address, instruction, data, and I.O. memories. Each one's uh, 1486 by one byte or 1K by 32 bits. Uh, this is the block diagram for our whole, uh, this wraps our whole design. So the CPU uh, test module is a test bench wraps or, or all of our uh, modules. Here you have uh, the data memory, I.O. memory, and the instruction memory module within the, the CPU. Uh, the format, uh, instruction data, I.O. and I.O. memory modules are byte addressable, and each memory location uh, hold, uh, holds one byte. Uh, operands are stored in big Indian format, where the most significant is stored at the lowest address, and the least significant at the uh, highest address. The uh, size, each memory uh, is organized in a 4096 by 8 bits fashion in here. And this is the full word representation, how it's in memory. So you have your current address. To move from word to word, you have to add uh, four. Um, our processor also has a register set of 32 registers. Each one is 32 bits wide. Also a 32 bit of, uh, program counter, five bit of flex uh, uh, register, we store register uh, there. and. Uh, uh, we can also handle 4, 8, 16, and 32-bit side and unsigned integer data uh, paths, the data types, I'm sorry. Uh, here is our uh, machine register set, uh, 32 uh, registers, and uh, three important registers. Zero uh, holds a zero uh, value, 29, it's uh, for a stack pointer, and 31 for the return address. The uh, data types. Uh, uh, we have signed for the different uh, sizes, so 4, 8, 16, and 32. The MSB holds the sign, uh, well, where if it's a 1, it's a negative, 0, it's a, uh, it's a positive. Here you, we have the different ranges uh, for decimal and hexadecimal. The unsigned, uh, different sizes, 4, 8, 16, and 32, and the decimal and hexadecimal uh, ranges. And Nader is going to go over our enhancements. So we added two um, enhancements to our processor: a saturation arithmetic unit, and we're checking memory if it's ready to receive bits by data. 
saturated in arithmetic. It's a type of instruction, uh, it's a type of arithmetic um, in which the results of operations such as uh, subtraction, addition, multiplication, or division is uh, compared, it's bounded by a maximum and minimum value. And the processor would then compare it between uh, these values if it's, uh, if it's out of bounds, it would saturate the results and save it back to a register. This concept is always used in digital signal processing. Um, here is the block diagram of our ALU module. As you can see there, we uh, embedded the saturation unit inside the uh, ALU module. It is taking 232-bit uh, inputs and five bits uh, for the bit size, and we'll talk about the bit size later on. This is a signed and unsigned saturation waveform that we uh, simulated in that lab to show you what the, um, our saturation unit uh, does. So the, the processor samples the signal of uh, amplitude of two, and we're setting saturation of, uh, at one. If the signal is above that or below that, it will saturate the signal at the maximum level, which is one, and minimum level, which is uh, negative one. And that's for the signed. For the unsigned, same concept, except the uh, boundaries change. So the minimum level is zero, and the maximum level would be a two. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our signed saturation uh, instruction. What this does, the, the user specifies the source register and the bit size. The bit size can be from four, eight, 16, or 32. It depends on the data in there. If it's bigger than the bounds of four bits or eight or 16 or 32, it will saturate it and it will save it to the destination register. Otherwise, it will pass the data through and save it that thread, to that register. Here is our verification of our um, instruction working. So we're preloading values to registers first, and then we are testing register one, which holds a two to saturate at four bits. If the uh, data uh, contained within that register is between negative eight and seven, we will save it to a register, and we're saving this to a memory location actually here. If it's greater than that and it's positive, it will saturate it to the most positive value, which is a seven, and it will save it to the register. So R, R1 is uh, between the bounds, it's saved it to that register. R2, three, and four is saturated to the most maximum value, and it saves it to uh, 48, 4C, and 50. R5 is a negative, and it's uh, lower than the minimum value, it's saturated to the most uh, minimum number and saves it there. This is our eight bit um, saturation. Same concept, except that we had the boundaries change. Right here, we're passing R1 back uh, to a register. R2 and R3 and R4 are saturated to the maximum value and saved to memory. And R5 is saturated to the minimum value and saved to memory. 16 bits. Mm -hmm. This is our 16 bits uh, signed saturation. As you can see here, R1 and R2 are passed through because uh, they, fall, they fall within the range. Mm -hmm. R2 is uh, less than 16 bits and it's a positive number, so it goes in there. R3 and R4 are positives, and um, since they are greater than 16 bits, so they are saturated and they are um, written back to uh, 74 and 78. For R5, since it's a negative number and it's lower uh, than the minimum range, goes back to that um, address location, saturated. For the 32 bit sign, it's a bigger bound. R1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, they fall within the bounds, so all of them pass through, and they are saved in these registers. And this is the location. Uh, this is our on-site saturation uh, operation. So again, we uh, use the, uh, the, the value stored in uh, register RS, and we're going to saturate it. Uh, according to the value uh, specified on the bit size. Uh, for this uh, uh, operation, we use uh, an opcode of uh, 1F. Here is the uh, E key. Uh, this is for uh, verification for four bits on sign. So, of course, it's a different, uh, it's a different range because we're using on sign values, so our minimum value, it, it, it's zero. And here in the verification, we load on registers, uh, one through uh, five, and uh, the, uh, then those values, uh, go into test for these uh, boundaries. So register one is uh, within the range, so the value gets passed. The rest of the values fall uh, a, a way higher than our maximum value, so we saturate to the maximum value, which is F. And uh, we're saving to, uh, to the memory to have more space for verification, that's why. And then for 8-bit uh, on site, bigger range, we load uh, our registers, uh, one through uh, five, 
and uh, here uh, zero gets passed because it's uh, it's within our range. The uh, values on R uh, two on R three uh, actually uh, one yeah gets saturated all one two th uh, I'm sorry two three four gets saturated to the maximum value which is F F and also five it's, it gets saturated it's a bigger value. Uh, we start to our memory locations. Uh, 16 bit on sign, bigger range. Again, we load our registers with uh, data to uh, do our, uh, our uh, operation. So uh, here we have uh, register one within the range get uh, passed as well as register uh, two. Register three, it's uh, our max uh, value. So it doesn't saturate, gets tested, it, we pass the value. And register four and five, above or max, it gets saturated, and uh, those are the values going into those memory locations. 32, same concept, bigger range, we load of registers, and uh, all of them are within the range, so we just pass the values to those memory locations. Uh, this is our sign saturated at 8 bits. How this works is the uh, user specifies the source registers, RS and RT, and the processor then adds it. If and compare the results with the range, negative 120 and 127. If it's between the range, it will um, uh, save the results back to the destination register. Otherwise, it will saturate it and send it back to the destination register. Over here is our verification of uh, the sign 8 bits working. Um, we're taking register 1 and we're adding it together. To Yeah, we're taking R1 and adding it to R1, and we are comparing it to negative 120 and 127. If it's between that range, we save it back to the register and they save it back to memory. Over here we're taking um, R1 and R3, which holds a two and an FFF value, which is greater than eight bits. Since it's a positive number, it will saturate it to the maximum value and we save it back to memory. A 16 bits, same concept, except a, a better, uh, bigger range. Uh, we take RS and RT, we add them together and the processor will then um, compare it to the uh, range. Um, 32 bits, uh, same concept, bigger range. Uh, the sign saturation, uh, the user specifies the source registers, RS and RC, and we subtract them. And uh, if it's, uh, we'll compare them to the range, and if it's between the range, it will save it to the destination register. And if it's not, it will saturate it to that maximum or the minimum level. Also, I'd like to point out that the bit size will always be zero code because we are specific. That instruction is essentially just for 16 bits or 8 bits. Or separate opcodes for yeah, those cases. Opcodes. Yeah. Uh, sign saturated 16 bits, same concept, just bigger range. Uh, 32 bits, it's same concept again, but bigger range. Now we're performing the, the add and subtract operations with unsigned values. This is for 8 bits, uh, like uh, Nader uh, pointed out, the uh, bit size is zero field because that's specified within the instruction, and each one has a new uh, opcode. Here it's the uh, range for uh, 8 bit uh, addition. We're taking the 32 bits uh, of those uh, values, and uh, the uh, the result is the one that it's actually getting saturated to the specified size. So here is uh, our verification. We're loading uh, two registers. Here you can see the values. We add them, and uh, they're bigger than our range. So they are way above our eight bits. So they get saturated, and uh, they get saturated to the highest value, which is FF. And it's the same concept for a 16, uh, 16 bit on sign add, it's just a bigger range. We have a new old code, uh, 32 bits, same concept, bigger range, new old code for a new operation. Uh, subtraction, so same concept. Uh, we take the two registers and then we perform that subtraction and then uh, the result gets saturated according to the, uh, to the, to the size specified by the instruction. Uh, we have 16 bits and 32 bits. Uh, all of them, of course, different ranges. Uh, our second enhancement that we added to our processor is checking memory if it's ready. Since memory is asynchronous to CPU, the processor needs to know when memory is ready to receive the next byte of data. So we implemented the handshake process uh, by adding a memory ready signal to uh, data memory and IO memory. Uh, these are the uh, read and write states for data memory. As you can see here, uh, in the read state, when the chip select and read enable are asserted, but there's no read ready signal from data memory. The 
uh, controlling will stay in that state until it receives the ready signal from data memory, and then once it receives it, it will move on to the next state, which is writing back the uh, uh, data to a uh, register. Uh, here is the write state. The same concept, it's waiting for the ready signal from data memory. Once it receives it, it goes back to the fetch state, fetching the next instruction. Here is our simulation for the our read for data memory. Once these two signals, the to select and reselect, are asserted, the memory ready is asserted after some time. Uh, and once the to select and reselect are deasserted, memory ready, data memory ready is deasserted immediately. And once it's deasserted, the data is written back to the uh, specified destination uh, register. As you can see here, we're confirming that it's uh, written back to it. The same concept for the write, except for writing to memory. Once uh, the chip select and write select is uh, enabled, uh, after some time, the data memory ready is asserted. And once these two are asserted, uh, memory ready is deasserted. And we are confirming that we are writing the correct data to uh, memory as well over here. IO memory is the same concept. We are waiting for, uh, the processor is waiting for the uh, ready uh, signal from IO memory. Once it gets the signal, it will transition to the next state right away. And for the write, same as uh, data memory, it waits for the ready state, uh, for the ready signal, and it will, once it gets it, it will transition to the next state. Here's simulation, the IO memory is ready. As you can see, the chip select and the read enable are asserted, and the uh, uh, IO ready signal is asserted after some time. At once it's deasserted, we write the data back to uh, the destination version, which is 13. Um, here is the write verification. We, um, we're showing that the chip select and the write select, uh, once it's asserted, the I already is asserted after some time. And then once it's deasserted, uh, I already is deasserted. And here is our data. We're showing that the uh, uh, memory verification F8 is getting FFF, which is the correct data. For the future enhancements, can we, can we stop we, just before you get that? So you said, uh, mm -hmm. tell us how you simulated your memory unit. You said after a period of time. Yeah, it's, how did you it's, do that after a period of time? It's a, it's a fifteen nanoseconds, to be exact. Um, so you just a, did some kind a, of stall in the memory yeah. module. So inside each memory module, the I/O and the data memory, it has a delay in there okay. that will um, output to after fifteen Thank nanoseconds. You. Uh, for the future enhancements, we'd like to add more instructions to our saturated unit since it's functional now. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to expand our processor mm -hmm. to 64-bit. And uh, we'd love to uh, do pipelining. Why would you like to expand to 64-bit instructions? Uh, more... Uh, like, I, I mean, data sizes. Data sizes is 64-bit? Well, data size is awkward. I mean, we're not just limited to 6-bits. Uh, uh, and we can have more instructions, which, but 6-bits won't be enough. So we'd like to expand 64 bits. Okay, okay. We can specify. Okay. Yeah. And this is it. Excellent job. Excellent job.